from shy and rejected to confident and desired. Yesterday, Fernanda, Jonathan and myself, one of my best friends, were in the city center in Dublin. We're getting some coffee, having a nice conversation, and at some point, Jonathan and I decide we have to spend some quality mail time, so we say goodbye to Fernanda. Around five minutes after we say goodbye to Fernanda, I get a text from her. My Apple Watch, gives me a little WhatsApp notification. Yes, I figured out how to hack it because it's not part of the standard feature. <laughs> and so she goes to me, you wouldn't believe it, a ginger guy approached me. He was actually really good at his game. Jonathan and I, Jonathan obviously smirks at me and goes, ah, she's trying to make you a little jealous. It's a congruence test. <laughs> anyway, we keep walking, we keep spending some time, and around what, an hour or so later, 45 minutes later, she goes, you're not gonna believe it, a second ginger guy approached me, but this guy was terrible. And obviously then, I don't know, that evening or the next day, Fernanda and I do a little breakdown of the approach, because obviously it happens all the time that Fernanda walks through the city center and gets approached by random guys. I have no problem with that, as long as two to three minutes into the conversation, she politely tells them to get fucked in a nice way, basically saying, look, I have a boyfriend, appreciate it though. But it's cool to have a bit of an initial conversation because how could I possibly be mad at men for taking action? So we do a little breakdown and I ask her, where was the difference? The one guy was really good and they were both ginger, so like physically somewhat the same. And the other guy was terrible. Where was the difference? And so we were breaking down certain things about their approach and about the verbals as well as nonverbals that made all the difference. Because in the first case, she was like, wow, this is really good. So if, if she wouldn't be with the best ginger in the entire world, she may have actually considered going on a date with that guy, but obviously there's no competition because who the fuck is going to compete with me? So that wasn't the real option. But if that hadn't been the case, there would have been a possibility. So what's the difference between a guy who's amazing and could have potentially gotten a number in the date and a guy who's just absolutely disastrous and yeah, may just get two to three minutes of her attention purely out of compassion? Well, the first thing we broke down was, which is something that I teach my clients in detail, by the way, was positive energy and a warm smile. The first guy went in very positive, open body language and super positive. The second guy was very hesitant with his approach. She saw him coming, first of all, so she saw that it took him at least 30 seconds to make up his mind to finally walk up and approach her. So that obviously immediately decreases attraction because it's not necessarily a sign of confidence if you have to think about it for that long. The other guy, she didn't even see him coming. The first guy, he kind of scooped around, so he just appeared out of nothingness, so it didn't seem hesitant, or if there was hesitation, at least she didn't see it. But with the second guy, she kind of saw the hesitation and then eventually he came in. But when he came in, his shoulders were kind of in a weird position, bit of a defensive body language. He was like, excuse me, two seconds, really cute, so I just had to come and say hi. And they both, I think, used somewhat the same opener, excuse me, two seconds, you're really cute, so I had to come and say hi. So I think somewhat, the, uh, to a certain extent, the opener was the same. But it wasn't the words that mattered, right? Yes, with the right kind of opener at the right point in time, you can obviously build attraction, but it's not the words that matter, it's how they're presented. And so the second guy was completely shy, he was slow, lower volume, poor vocal projection. So the nonverbals were completely different. Then the next thing was the first guy was just flowing. He wasn't questioning himself whatsoever. He wasn't stuck in his head. He was just flowing. Now obviously you could tell that that guy had some experience. He must have done that a considerable amount of time. And the other guy, maybe it was his first approach ever, maybe his 20th. He didn't have a lot of reps. Now, if you're a man and you want to learn how to find the right girlfriend or life partner, you don't have to go and approach thousands of women. That's not what this is about, right? But you got to get some amount of practice to get over this initial fear. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. So he was not only super hesitant, but he was also super stuck in his head. And basically, right after the opener, he's like, hey, you're really cute to come inside. And she goes, oh, okay, thank you very much. And then he goes, so what are you doing today? And she's kind of like, what, what, excuse me, who are you? Who are you that I should tell you what my plan for today is? Whereas the other guy, the good ginger, <laughs> he was just kind of flowing. He was making playful assumptions like, I bet you're from this country, da da da. He was making statements as opposed to just sucking value out of her. In other words, trying to take something from her at an energetic level by asking questions. You have to put yourself in her shoes. 
If you talk to a woman, like if you're a man with a busy career or your own business, and you're going about your life, you're going to a Starbucks, you're going to your gym, you're going shopping, and you happen to see an attractive lady that you want to go and say hi to, you have to put yourself in her shoes and you have to understand that most people who approach women during the day are creeps. And I don't mean men actually doing an approach, but it's people who are either trying to, it's homeless people, it's people who are advertising some cult, it's just general weirdos. So of course she has to have her defense mechanism up. Of course you have to be absolutely empathetic towards her situation. She's not gonna just like drop down to her knees and you know like unzip your belt the second you approach her. If that's your expectation, of course you're gonna be disappointed. You have to assume the burden of proactivity. So you can't just be asking questions all the time. If you roll in there to a random stranger, tell her she's pretty, she's okay, which is fine. But again, if you open her, don't just give her a compliment for her beauty because she gets that all the time. Make it a little bit more unique. I really like your outfit except for the shoes. I really like your pants. Take something specific. Take something specific because she's gonna appreciate it a lot more. The best openers are observational ones. Yeah, that would go too far and too deep for today. But the more observational, the more situational you can make it, the more she would realize, ow, this, ah, this wasn't scripted. This is evidently not some weird pickup line, but it's actually spontaneously in the moment. Obviously, that's a skill set you gotta develop, which is something that I help my clients with in detail. So, we already got two massive differences. Body language, completely different. Open and inviting, a big smile from the first guy, and the second guy was kind of like hunched over Gollum. And then the second part was he was totally in his own mind, questioning everything he says. So, if you want to overcome that, obviously there are certain mental barriers. You have to, look, a lot of the times, if you have that, right? If you have this fear of approaching women, the technical term is called approach anxiety. You feel this pressure, you feel like you can't fully be yourself. Or if you can go and say hi to women, at least when you approach the ones that you're really interested in, you're not acting like yourself. And part, of it goes very deep, but part of the reason is that you think you have to have this perfect thing to say. You need her validation for what's about to come out of your mouth. So, first of all, I'd like to offer you the idea that what you have to say really doesn't have to be perfect as long as it comes from a certain place. Tony Robbins says that true certainty only ever comes from within, and you already know that. If you run a successful business, if you're good in your career, you've had to overcome times of uncertainty in your life. And yes, looking at your finances for security is nice. And obviously we want systemic certainty, but the only real certainty you'll ever have is the one that comes from within. Because situations and environments change, circumstances change. The only true and reliable source of certainty is from within. And same thing in dating. It's not so much exactly what you say, but the certainty you say it with. And obviously there's the vibe, you gotta get good at storytelling, that's all part of that. But you also have to understand, that's the second part that I addressed a second ago, is you don't need her to approve of what you're saying. If you really feel the need that this random stranger who happens to be beautiful has to approve of what comes out of your mouth, you'll never be able to come across as the most attractive version of yourself. You should know that what you have to say has value. You are a man of value. It doesn't mean you're perfect. I'm not, you're not, but haven't you put in years into building yourself into the man you currently are? Be that you have at least one or two areas you're very, very, very successful in. You've proven to yourself you can be disciplined in at least one or two areas of your life. You've put in a lot of work to becoming the person you are right now. And obviously it's never gonna end. Like, I don't say I'm perfect. Like in a dating context, the degree of delusional confidence is obviously helpful, but obviously we wanna keep working on ourselves. But you have to recognize, and that's one of the main things that I help my clients with, how valuable your presence in her life would be. And once you know that, you're no longer at the mercy, oops, pardon me, of her approval. It's completely secondary. What you say doesn't come out of your mouth to get approval from her, but it's purely because it's a natural expression of yourself. It's almost a conflicting paradigm because on the one hand, obviously you're saying what you're saying to get her and keep her interested in you. But that mindset doesn't help you in the moment. A much more useful mindset in the moment is, I'm going up to this person in a respectful, calibrated, and provocative, playful, intelligent, and effective way, and I'm gonna make her an offer. In other words, you're offering your energy, you're offering positivity, you're offering her a chance 
to apply for the position of a girlfriend and life partner. And if she accepts it, amazing. If she doesn't, she doesn't. But I'm doing it because this is part of my purpose right now. Now, obviously, you as a man don't just have one purpose. Uh, your main purpose is probably your career or your business. Maybe your purpose is going to be your family at some point. But we have multiple different dharma, multiple different purposes in life. And right now, Eckhart Tolle says your primary purpose is always just to be present. Your secondary purpose is then the chosen one. But as much as your purpose can be your business or your career or the impact you want to have, the finances you want to accrue, the way you want to take care of your family, your parents, the body you want to get, your purpose in that very moment is to grow. And one of the most effective ways to put all this personal development into practice is to approach a random stranger and go through this wall of fear and to not listen to these negative and limiting thought patterns. What is she going to think of me? There's people around her. Oh my God. You have to understand that approaching somebody is not creepy in and of itself. It completely depends on the way it's done. This is not some pickup artist nonsense. It's not about lying, manipulating, learning certain lines, but it's about an authentic as well as effective expression of who you are. And the main message I want to get across to you today is you can go from being the second guy who approached Fernanda, who was terrible, to the first guy who was actually really good. Where is the difference? The difference is mindset and the difference is skill set. It's about communication and psychology. And obviously, if you want to learn how to get more dates, you can use technology, which is dating apps as well. But you can become that person. There's nothing inherently wrong with you. I used to be in nightclubs in Berlin or in Germany or all over the world. And by the way, you never have to go to bars and nightclubs if you want to find the right one. But it's a fun place if you want to go there. And I was looking at these fuckboys, these men who are super cool, right? A little bit too cool for school. And on the one hand, I was judging them. I was like, oh, they're probably idiots and they have an IQ of 60. <laughs> Uh, me being completely egocentric in that moment. But on the other hand, I was also saying, wow, they probably have something I don't. This coolness, this degree of certainty, they don't seem to question themselves as much. They're just like flowing. And what comes out of their mouth isn't even particularly val valuable or relevant or doesn't make any sense. But somehow women start laughing. They got something that I don't have inherently. I'm a ginger. I'm screwed. Evidently, that's not the case. I do have a soul and I have everything that it takes. But it was a journey that I had to go through. Now, my journey took a lot longer than it may have taken me if I had had amazing mentors. Now, I did have mentors in the beginning, which allowed me to make progress at all, because otherwise I would have stayed stuck with my ex-wife in a marriage that was sucking the life out of me. Not because she's a bad person, but because the relationship was structurally broken because of a lack of compatibility, because we simply weren't right for each other. We didn't value the right things. We didn't want the same things from life. So please understand that you, that there's nothing these men have that you don't have. You can become that person who has the ability to introduce himself freely to any beautiful woman he sees, wherever that may be. And if you want to learn how to do that in detail, simply apply for a free initial consultation call and we'll talk about your individual situation. We're going to take a look, where are your blind spots? Where are your sticking points? What do you need to improve to get more dates with more amazing women and eventually find the right girlfriend or life partner. Please take action with me, come into my coaching program or do it by yourself. But stop thinking about it. More action, less thinking. I wish you all the best.